morning and welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. My name is Reese Leach, I'm an elder here. And once again, I feel like I'm privileged to be able to help with uh, presenting a recorded worship service to all of our friends and family at Grace. Today, believe it or not, is a day of celebration. It's a day of thanksgiving. No time to be down in the dumps. As Christians, we celebrate our risen savior you remember what, how it feels on Easter morning? That feeling of emotion and hope and joy? Let us recapture those feelings and heartfelt celebration each and every day. The per, this is a personal choice. It puts us in the right frame of mind to do God's work and let God's nature shine through us. Speaking of shining through, with God's intentions. Thanks be to God for those making these recorded worship services possible. Reverend Gill is back with us today. Brad Keller, Leonor Yanez, Barbara Stanton, Doreen and Maylene Sinez, and our wonderful choreographer, Jim Leach. And now please join me in the call to worship. Give thanks to God who spread a cloud for a covering and gave fire to the light in the night who opened the rock and water gushed forth and flowed through the desert sands. Seek the Lord and the strength only God can give, a presence that continually abides. We will remember the wonderful works God has done, the miracles and the judgments God made. Let us worship God. Brad is going to sing and play for us hymn number 152, The Majesty and Glory of Your Name. Alleluia, Alleluia, the majesty and glory of your name. of your deeds, in the eternity of boasting how great you are. The heavens cannot contain our wonderful expression of your grace and mercy. The seas would flood ashore with the expanse of your love. Yet we are bold to bring you our, th our praise and thanksgiving. We delight to remember how you care for us. Be pleased with our offerings of unbridled devotion and accept our attempts to give you the worship you are due. Amen. Please join me now in prayers for the people. 
Oh God, we praise you for your steadfast guidance and deliverance. We seek you in the small things and marvel in the miraculous large things. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are our strength and refuge. We offer up prayers of healing and strength for the Harry family, for Jeff and Valerie Hester, Jerry Kidder and Keith Forbes, and many others in silent prayer. We ask for common sense for our leaders and that one day we can experience world peace in your name. Provide leadership and safety for those returning to school, Ashley and Aiden, Maylene, Kayla, Doreen, Emily, Will, Jay and Cole, Jim, Debbie and Brad teaching, and our Boy Scout Troop 215. We ask for a comfort and encouragement for those transitioning to new careers, Jim Thompson, Jim Leach, Terry Erskine, and myself, Reese Leach. We pray for the sources of funding for the new well at Grace and praise and thanksgiving and hope for your presence and uplifting nature. In Christ, all things are truly possible. Amen. And please join me now for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll now read our prayer of confession. Like our ancestors before us, we complain when things do not go our way. We want abundance of everything rather than what is sufficient to sustain us. We would rather be elsewhere than where we are at the moment. When things do not go our way, we ask, where are you? We would rather you serve us than be accountable ourselves. You gave mana and quail to those before us, yet we still doubt you will be there for us. Forgive us our lack of trust in your goodness, and grant us forgiveness, we humbly pray. Amen. And now, through the grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know that our sins are forgiven. I'll now read our affirmation of faith. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O Thou of God and man, the Son, Thee will I cherish, Thee will I honor, Thou mayst us Savior. 
going to play us a wonderful piece of music while we contemplate what our tithes and offerings are. The, your gifts are truly needed at this time. We're digging a new well here at the church. It's expensive. It's $9,000. If you feel that you've been blessed recently by the Lord, please give generously. Your donations can be mailed to 1844 Hypoluxo Road, Lantana, Florida, 33462. Thank you and God bless you. Brad for that wonderful music what wonderful gifts you bring us each week we really are appreciative and I'm sure so is God and now please join me in the prayer of dedication oh God you give us tasks to perform you equip us with strengths and abilities beyond what we deserve in Christ you call us to faithfulness to exercise obedience to be deliberate in our discipline we come now offering you the results of our labors Use them as a means to further your work in Christ's name. Amen. And now we'll hear the Old Testament reading. Reading from the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 16, verse 2 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for the day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepared what they bring in, it will be, it will be twice as much as they bring on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what we are that you complain against us. And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, 
Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat in the morning, you shall have your fill of bread, and then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And the evening quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Hear the word of God as it is written in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, beginning with verse 1. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them received also the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to you this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Here ends the reading of our scripture lesson, the word of our Lord. This week I was listening to an interview of someone who was the director of the Florida State Program for enforcing the rules of, of how restaurants and other businesses should operate during this pandemic and how restaurants are limited to 50% occupancy and how in many different bars and small settings that if you have more than 25 people, everybody should be, should be wearing masks and that should be the limit for the number of people in a small room. And this fellow said that it was not easy going to restaurants and different places and finding people there who were not wearing masks, who were close together and he 
would give them citations and, and warnings. And finally, he would have to send in people who worked for his department to levy fines against them. And people were grumbling on all sides. People who ran businesses who said, we need to have more people here or else we can't survive. And some people that want the freedom just to socialize without a mask. And you also have people grumbling that people need to be concerned about the health of others. So we certainly are living in a time right now of great grumbling. Today we read about some grumblers and it's a parable that isn't imaginary for Jesus, but it was something going on in their life. It was a real life situation. In the fall each year, there would have to be a harvest for the grapes and workers were needed to harvest these grapes. And, and they were very essential because it was a very limited time. And if you didn't have enough workers and if they weren't working around the clock, rain could come and destroy your crop. So workers were very welcome. And men would stand in the marketplace and at different times of the day, they would be hired to work in the vineyard. And the men who would be hanging around there would not be lazy as time went on, it's just that they hadn't been chosen to work in the vineyard. And I think even today, you can go downtown Lake Worth on a number of days and you can see men standing on the corner waiting for somebody to come by in a truck to give them a job in the fields or a job with landscaping. Men and women who are looking for work. They, they are looking to find food, money to, to provide for their families. Well, in this story today, we see that some of the men were there until 5 p.m., which is proof of how desperate they wanted work. They didn't give up. They, they waited around all day long, hoping that somebody would give them a job. And the people that were there at 5 p.m. were probably people who were the poorest and, and sometimes the lowest people in society. The servants and other people who had been called to work were very often attached to some family and had some kind of connection to those who owned the vineyards. And so they would be hired, but if you didn't have any connection, it could be very, very difficult. To be unemployed meant that for some families, the children would not have food to eat. So this parable shows us life in ancient Palestine and what it was like. In January, this story made me think of Doretha Hare, the widow of Alfred Hare, who is one of the famous highwayman artists, and he had just died, and Doretha told me that she really started to paint herself back in the 1960s. She said after her husband died because she was working, but to supplement what she was doing and to provide food for her children, she worked at painting. She said, in those days, if you didn't work, you didn't eat, and you needed to do something. Well, it was certainly true for these people today in this story. They needed work. And it's a great parable because it contains the truth of the Christian faith. Jesus is giving a warning to disciples. He says, you have 
been given the great privilege of coming into the church first. You are early, but others are welcome. In later days, others will come. Gentiles, people from other nations, they too will be my disciples. You must not claim a special honor. All people are special to God. In my previous church in Central Florida, it was a very old church, and some people had grandparents who had been members in the church. And all of a sudden, while I was pastor there, people were moving into the area, people who had retired, newcomers. And it was a great time of transition for the congregation because all of a sudden, newcomers were coming and, and other people sometimes felt maybe they had seniority because they, they had been there a long time and their parents and grandparents had been members. And so that can happen in a church. Jesus is saying that all people are special and there is no such thing as just seniority. We see that the landowners gave their workers something to do. He could not bear to see those who were not working unemployed. And the landowner was very generous. I mean, there were people who worked all day and were paid their salary. People that came at 12 and at 3 p.m., they were also paid well the same. And then you have the people who came and worked at 5 p.m. And those people were given just as much as the others who worked all day long. This is an amazing parable because it shows that everybody was paid the same amount no matter how many hours they worked that day. The landowner could not bear to see people who were unemployed and struggling. And so the landowner goes beyond justice and he's very generous and gives them more than their due. He was trying to help their families. And we see how those who had come at 9 a.m. in the morning, worked all day, were grumbling and saying, we don't understand this. We worked all day long, and yet we're, we're paid the same as somebody who worked, who showed up at 5 p.m. It's just not right. It's not fair. I had a lady one time tell me when she heard me preaching on this message who told me after after my sermon after church she said this is the worst story she's ever heard in her life she said, this is the worst parable of jesus it's just not right but we need to see the deeper meaning that jesus cared about the people who were struggling and that's the way god sees it too. It's very symbolic of God's grace. It's something that we don't deserve. It is a gift from God. And it's not something that, that we earn, but definitely a gift. And for God, what's important is that we come to him. That that we come to Jesus 
whenever we can. For some of us, we might have responded to the Lord's call when we were children in Sunday school or maybe at church camp. But I've met some of the most amazing Christians who were much older in life who gave their hearts to the Lord. I've, I've met different people at times where I've, I've been so amazed at the way God has worked in their life. I remember a fellow who was a very close friend who had worked as a banker. And for so long, he felt called to doing things for the Lord. And this banker became a lay pastor through our presbytery program at the time where you could do that. And he said, I always wanted to just have more time to serve God in the church. And he wasn't able to do that until after he retired. But he gave his heart fully to the Lord. The Lord loves to see that. No matter what age, we come to the Lord and know that we are welcome. And we experience the generosity and the grace of the Lord. In our Old Testament scripture reading today, we see some other grumblers. We see, again, people that, that miss out on the spirit of generosity, of what the Lord is doing in their life. We see how Moses had led, led the people from ancient Egypt, where they had been slaves, to freedom. He led them safely across the Red Sea. And the waters closed up on the Egyptians who were pursuing them and trying to kill them. Now they're safely on the other side. And the people quickly forget this deliverance, but now they're grumbling. They're saying, we're hungry. We need something to drink. We need food. Moses, did you lead us out here so that we can die? We could have stayed back in Egypt. There were the flesh pots there cooking. There was, there was something to drink. But no, you lead us out here into the wilderness. God hears the grumbling. And God tells Moses, tell the people that he's going to send them something to eat. Bread from heaven. A protein substance that they could find in the mornings. It'd be like dew on the plants and on the rocks, and they could gather that, that together and they could eat it. As long as they didn't take too much, they couldn't store it because it would spoil, but take what you need. And God, for many, many years, faithfully provided them with what is called manna, which is a Hebrew word, means, which means, what is it? Some people were saying at first to the they wouldn't like it. What is this? We don't know what this is. That's the way they were. They were grumblers. But some people ate it and said, you know, it's not too bad. It's, it tastes kind of sweet. You might have gotten tiresome eating the same meal all the time, but, but it, it sustained them. It gave them strength to persevere. Manna. This, this sick, sticky substance that they would gather and eat each day. And they would say, manna, what is this? What is this? But manna, most of all for them, was a sign of God's presence. Manna was a reminder that God was with them and gave them hope. And for us, in our lives, there are times when, when we're struggling that God will give us something 
to hang in there, to persevere. In a sense, it's our manna. It may be something that comes into our life that keeps us afloat, that keeps us going, that sometimes we say, Lord, what is this? Why is this in my life? And when we reflect back on it later on, we realize it was like manna. It fed us. It kept us going strong. Manna, what is it? It's God's presence. God promises to always be with us. There's always that temptation to grumble. But to remember that God is with us. That God gives us enough light to keep moving forward. That God gives us hope. And God gives us strength to persevere each day. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we can gather here today and for your great love for all of us. In your incarnation, you came and dwelt among us. You moved into us. In our darkness, you became light. You caused our deserts to bloom. Lord, we confess our utter dependence upon you and your ability to keep coming to us. You give us eyes to see when you stand beside us. You give us ears to hear your voice in the wilderness. You give us the faith to see your hand working wonders in our world around us. In lonely and desperate times, like this time that we're going through with the coronavirus. You are God with us. Give us the grace to always be your people. And to know that you are with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
And now may the grace and the peace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you all. Amen. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour every day. Go now and stay, steadfast, strong, and true. Know he will guide you and know you.